So in the human circulatory system, there is blood, heart, and blood vessels. So blood flows to almost every single cell in the body through a network of vessels. There are three types of blood vessels you know about. There are arteries, veins, and capillaries. Now you have a huge network of arteries, veins, and capillaries. If you actually took them all out of your body and joined them together in one long line, an adult's circulatory system would stretch about 100,000 miles. So it's an amazingly complex network of vessels that supply all of our cells. Arteries carry blood away from the heart to the organs. They tend to carry oxygenated blood, but that's not a good definition because there is one artery in the heart, the pulmonary artery, which doesn't carry oxygenated blood. But a definition that does work for arteries is that they carry a blood away from the heart. The blood is under really high pressure because it has just been pumped by the heart, so the blood is under really high pressure. So the artery walls need to be able to stretch uh, with that pressure and recoil. And that's what gives you a pulse. That's what you can feel when you feel your pulse. You've also got smaller arteries that feed off the major arteries. These ones are called arterioles, the smaller ones, and they carry blood into organs from the main arteries. Veins carry blood back to the heart from the organs. So once the blood's gone through your organs, come out the other side and all the oxygen's been used up and nutrition's been used up, then it flows back to the heart in veins. Now the blood at this point is under very low pressure. It's not being pumped by the heart anymore. It's flowed through the organs. The pressure of the blood is much lower. Therefore, the, the actual size of veins need to be much bigger, um, much have a much bigger lumen, which is the hole uh, in the middle of the, the blood vessel, to allow the blood to flow with not very much resistance. They tend to carry deoxygenated blood, uh, and to stop the blood flowing backwards, which can happen because the pressure is so low, especially if it's trying to carry blood from, for example, your feet up your body, um, when you're, you don't want the blood to be going the wrong way, um, you have valves that shut that stop the blood coming back the wrong way. So if you're looking at the structure of these things and comparing veins and arteries, veins tend to have thin walls with not very much muscle or elastic tissue, and they have a very large lumen. They carry blood back to the heart and they contain valves. Arteries, on the other hand, much thicker wall, full of muscle, full of elastic fiber, small lumen to maintain a high pressure, and they carry blood away from the heart. The last type of blood vessel are the capillaries. Now these are tiny, tiny little um, blood vessels that carry the blood to the individual cells. They are permeable, they have permeable walls which allow the molecules to diffuse out the oxygen, to diffuse out carbon dioxide, to diffuse in, and they actually can leak out a lot of the plasma from the blood at this point, which bathes the cells in all the nutrients that the cells need, um, and they get those through diffusion. Their walls are only one cell thick capillary, again, to allow for exchange of materials to be much quicker and simpler. You do need to know about the major blood vessels that supply the major organs in the body. So we've already mentioned when we talked about the heart, but the uh, blood vessels that supply the lungs are called the pulmonary artery and the pulmonary vein. Um, the uh, liver is a strange organ because it actually has three blood vessels uh, that, uh, that are associated with it. You have got two blood supplies. You've got a hepatic artery, which is carrying oxygenated blood from the heart straight into the liver. But also, when you eat all your food, the first place it goes after you've digested it is to the liver to be able to deal with any toxins that are in the food or not. So there's also a blood supply coming from the intestine there into the liver, which is called the hepatic portal vein. And then there is the hepatic vein, which is just carrying all the deoxygenated blood out of the liver. The kidneys are supplied by uh, the renal artery. Anything to do with the kidney is renal. So you've got renal artery supplies the kidneys and you've got the renal veins carry the uh, deoxygenated blood back to the heart after it leaves the kidneys.